Good morning, Simmers. This is your captain speaking, and we are about to embark on the 14th leg of the Balkans bush trip. This time we'll take us from Syros to Naxos, uh, and it's a short flight. It will only, uh, according to according to the ETA here, 13 minutes. It'll be a little longer than that because uh, for some reason these are uh, quite a bit shorter than reality. Uh, but uh, hopefully it will be an enjoyable trip. I pulled up uh, a little uh, nav map to get an idea of what this uh, trip would be like. And uh, so we've got a... Uh, uh, a general idea of what the uh, uh, trip will be. Uh, this doesn't take into account any of the wave points that will be included in the uh, in the uh, uh, log here, the nav log. But uh, it it shows us the starting location, the the uh, departure airport, and the destination airport. And so we've got a lot of water we're going to cover. And uh, we'll be going over this small island here, at the very tip of it, uh, to come to uh, the island of Naxos, where we will end up at uh, Lima Golf November X-Ray uh, Airport. So uh, let's go ahead and get in the cockpit and get our plane ready for the trip to get up in the air. It will take just a few minutes for us to uh, get there, so I'm going to pause and we'll come back right uh, after we're finished here. So here we are at Syros, and uh, just where we left off when we landed, we still have the, uh, uh, the tarmac guy here standing up with his lights. His arms must be pretty tired by now. But uh, let's go ahead and get in and see what this flight's going to be. All right, let's see. Looks like all of our uh, all of our um, lights are on and it's just exactly the way we left it in the cockpit the last time. Uh, usually they get things prepared for the flight a little bit better than this, but uh, uh, this is an exception it looks like. Maybe it's uh, changed due to uh, the patch upgrades that we've received since the last uh, trip that we've taken. But let's go ahead and I'll just go through a quick uh, run up here to get uh, everything running and let's see what everything looks like here first of all um, full rich let's crack that open a little bit our flaps are up tanks are set to both our uh, Trim is neutral. Let's see. Make sure we've got uh, gasoline in. We don't have control of gasoline here, it looks like. So hopefully they put some gas in the tank since we last uh, landed. But let's get started here. Master, master. Turn on our beacon. And nav lights, peak to heat is okay. Taws system test okay. GPS is set. All of my V references are set. 
Looks like we've got a half tank, half two half uh, tanks of uh, fuel, so that's good. We won't need nearly that much, so that's uh, that's just fine. And so. at 100 for our batteries. We're going to be uh, flying today at about 1,500 feet. So. And let's see, FLC. 74 is our V. Y speed, I believe. Best rate of climb. Seventy four is correct. And so we should be ready to go. Let's uh, Let's taxi. We'll go to the end of runway 18 and take off from there. That will put us in the right direction. The wind speed is minimal, so uh, it shouldn't matter which end we start at. No taxiways, so we have to backtrack a bit on the runway. <coughs> Pardon me. Looks like we will be taking off into the wind as little as it is. That's good. Not the longest of runways, but should be sufficient for our needs. I think I will take one uh, notch of flaps just to be on the safe side. All right, we are at 10 degrees. And let's take a look at our nav log, see what we have coming up. Uh, not much. We'll take the flight from Syros Airport, head for the island's easternmost point, the rocky uh, Fokio trips coast from there. I would really do apologize for missing messing up these names. There's just no way I can know how to pronounce them. Uh, from there, you'll continue across the water in the same direction toward a cluster of islands in the uh, Cyclades group. And as you near them, make a path toward the center island of Paros uh, to a western outcropping that overlooks Agios 
Jonas Bay. And then the second uh, point in this leg is the landing, so it's going to be really short. Let's go. Full power, I'm going to hold the brakes this time so we get the full effect of our power. Speed tape is live. Rotate. Bring the flaps up. Should have uh, set the heading bug, but let's do that now. Apply the autopilot, and now we'll go to nav. head immediately off the coast of this island and get out into the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. It takes a while for the autopilot to uh, line the plane up with the GPS. I hope that's something that they will tweak as they continue to improve the product. I don't think that's the way uh, real our aircraft behave. We've made it to our cruising altitude. I'm going to cut back a bit on the power. And lean it out just a little bit. And we'll stay right there. Still have a lot of people in the forums that are complaining about the autopilot. I have not had uh, as much bad luck as it seems that some others have. And I don't know the reason for that other than the possibility that I may be uh, utilizing the autopilot a little differently than other uh, pilots do. I think I may be a little bit more careful about the order in which I do things uh, so that things are set up uh, correctly at the point that I engage certain parts of the autopilot. But that really should not uh, be that much of, make that much of a difference. The autopilot should not cause a plane to crash when you turn it on, not unless you've done something really seriously wrong uh, in setting it up.
I think I may do a few videos on the autopilot after a while and uh, the use of uh, ATC and IFR versus VFR flying might be some interesting uh, things to see in uh, those videos. If you've been with us since the beginning, you have seen uh, 13 of my Balkan videos already. Uh, this makes the 14th. There's only one more to go until we reach the end of the Balkan bush trip. If you haven't done so yet, we hope that you will press the subscribe button and the like button. It's always nice to see a little bit of interaction from our viewers. Of course, if you have any comments or questions about what uh, about these flights that we are taking, uh, please express those in the comments below the video, and we'll try to respond as uh, quickly as we are able. Beautiful overcast skies today. Perfect flight for VFR. Let's take a look on the outside. a little bit of a crosswind causing us to crab into the wind a little bit. Otherwise the tail would be from this uh, default vantage point the tail would be immediately behind the aircraft and it's uh, off to the side a little bit that tells you that we're crabbing. And you can see that from the inside as well with the uh, add-on that I have here that, in, that improves the G1000. This little indicator here on the left is uh, a target point. It shows you the direction that the aircraft is uh, going. And you can also see that we have a five mile per hour or five knots uh, crosswind uh, from the right, which is pushing the aircraft to the left. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It is. Oh, it is pushing the aircraft to the left. That's why we're flying to the left of the uh, angle of our flight. We're pointing at 140, but our actual uh, direction is, if we look over here, 137 degrees. So about a three degree difference due to the, that crosswind. We also have a headwind of about five miles per hour that's slowing us down a bit. Our true airspeed is 108 knots, whereas our ground speed is only 102 knots. I believe a knot is about 1.71 times a mile one mile per hour 
So 100 knots is uh, should be about 171 miles per hour. Does that make sense? 1.71. I read this weekend that the knot is used because of its convenience or nautical miles are used because of its convenience in uh, navigation. A nautical mile is equal to one degree of uh, longitude. Now, that may be maybe one second of longitude. I'll have to uh, look that up again to be certain. But it's, it's tied in uh, to the latitude and longitude system and uh, makes it a little bit easier for calculating uh, distances and so on on the, uh, on the globe. So here we're coming to this uh, island, and we'll cross it and head over to the uh, airport. Not very much farther to go, about 10 nautical miles. making our turn toward the airport now and we'll need to start descending in just a few moments. Let's see if we can see our airport yet. Yeah, find our airport. Airport is going to be somewhere right beyond this hill, I think. There's a bay that sits behind the hill, and the airport is going to be right on the edge of that bay, running north and south. Why don't we start reducing our air speeds and get ready for our landing? We could go uh, one knot of flaps right now, would be all right. A little more control over the, the uh, airplane when we don't have any flaps, so we'll uh, delay that for a few minutes.
go ahead and disable the autopilot now and take over control and line up for the runway. if we can see use our magical here is our runway that we're looking for right there And we'll go to 10 degrees flaps, push our nose down, we don't want to climb. And we'll start our descent. This is Noxios, Noxos right in front of us on the left. two notches. Need to uh, slow down. and full flaps. And that was just about, well, I won't say perfect, but better than my usual landing. And my landing crew is here going to help me park. And that is the end of our trip. We'll come back 
for the final trip in a little while. Stay tuned. Subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already, and give us a like. Thank you.